Now here Jesus said, He who believes in me, the work that I do, all the things that I've done, his preaching, his uh, uh, converting people, changing people, and his miracles, and how he comforts people, how he heals people, how he drives out demons, that those who believe in Jesus will also do an even greater work than this he will do. Now we must pay attention to this word greater, it's not better. We can never do better things than Jesus, but we can do greater things. There are some evangelists who have meetings of a million people and with television broadcast and uh, there can be millions and millions of people watching at the same time. So the works are greater, but not better, because we can never do things better. Because Jesus has gone to His Father, because Jesus has gone to heaven, so He, he uh, leaves the work to us. Okay, explanation of this passage. First we want to explain the passage. Excuse me. Okay, Jesus has given us the authority and power to do the things Jesus do and even to do greater things. So Jesus has given us, us the authority. And then second, that includes bringing people to believe and follow Christ and perform different kinds of miracles. And then notice that Jesus did not say that we can do better works than He. We can never do better works than Jesus. But we can do greater work than His work when He was still on earth, while He was still on earth. When He is in heaven, no one can do greater things than He in heaven. Some people now have meetings that have more, more people uh, than in Jesus' ministry on earth. And we cannot do greater works than what He is doing now in heaven. Jesus is ministering to countless number of people now. We cannot do greater things than that. Okay, so the theme is Jesus has given us authority and power to do greater things He has done. So He has given us the power and authority to do greater things than He has done on earth. Now here I have a picture uh, to help us understand this better. There are people who don't think about Jesus giving us that authority. And they just think that they have to generate their own power and performance. And these people have no assurance of what they do. Uh, they have no, have no assurance that God is pleased with them. So some people think they have to generate their own power. But Jesus wants us to believe that the power comes from Him. So people who know that Jesus is responsible for our results in life and ministry have confidence and power. So when we believe that Jesus is responsible for our ministry. He will make sure that we can do greater things than He on earth. While He was still on earth, He will make sure that will happen. So He will give us strength and power and wisdom and the opportunities to do these things. So when we believe in that, then we can have confidence that we can do greater and greater things in Jesus. Not by our, our own power, but by Jesus' power. So you can see the difference between serving God with the motivation from the law only, that they think they have to, have to work harder. Now, I do work hard. We, we do want to work hard. But we don't think that it's by our own power. We can never do great things by our own power. It's by Jesus' power. So we trust in Jesus, His promise, His assurance of us, His authority and power that He gives to us. So that is what we mean by His nature and His grace. That everything we do is by Jesus promised, by His power, by His uh, grace and nature. Okay, now outline. Now this is a suggested outline. That first point A is negative and positive examples of people. And, and that the purpose of that is to uh, wake people up that there are some people who don't rely on Jesus' promises. They just rely on their own power and they think that they can do great things. So negative examples. Many Christians don't have confidence 
to do great things in God. They don't realize that Jesus wants us to do greater things for God. Many also try to boost the power by shouting or by ungodly means and even witchcraft. God does not like that. So some people don't have the confidence to do great things for God. And they don't realize that Jesus wants us to do great things for God. He doesn't realize that it's from God, from Jesus, that He wants us to do greater things. It's Jesus who want us, He wants us to do greater things. And He will give us the authority and the power to do greater things. So many people think that they serve by their own power. So they try to boost the power by shouting. So when people pray for people, they experience the Holy Spirit, they shout. Now, it's, it's, uh, I don't mean it's, you know, we are forbidden to shout. Uh, it's okay to shout. But some people think that by shouting, they have more power. They will shout, power, power, fire. And now, it's not wrong to say that, but it's more important to draw people to Jesus. So we don't have to shout to draw people to uh, the attention to Jesus. We can say, Jesus is loving us now. Relax in God. Trust in God. Believe that He is doing great things for us right now. So we don't have to boost our power with shouting. And some people, even by ungodly means, and even with, with witchcraft. I was told by an African pastor that some pastors use witchcraft in their me meetings uh, so to have more power so that people will be attracted, so there will be more giving. Now this is terrible. This is really terrible because if we use witchcraft, it's uh, you know, not pleasing to God. God hates that. So is He serving God or is He serving Himself? by getting more people and more money. So if we serve by witchcraft, then we are becoming the enemy of God and we are not serving God. But I heard from this pastor that uh, there are some pastors even seek the power of witchcraft. So they're not trusting in Jesus' power. They don't think Jesus' power is enough and they don't think that Jesus has given us power and He will continue to give us power so they don't spend time in God, trusting in God, loving God to have the power of God. They trust in themselves or trust in visible ways by witchcraft. So, and God doesn't like that and God even hates that. And many Christians hold on to Jesus' promise and exercise authority and experience great works of God. So this is positive examples. There are some people who pray much and they trust in God and they have great authority. So these are examples of people to let people know that there are people who don't trust in Jesus' authority and power. Okay, God's nature and grace. God is full of authority and power. He can transform people and He can perform any great miracles. So God is all authority on earth. He can transform people from unbelievers to believers. He can transform people's spiritual life to, that He will love God more. And He can also perform great miracles that He can heal people, He can drive out demons, He can even raise people from the dead. So we trust in God. He can do all these things. So by God's power, we can do these things also. And two, God wants to give us this authority and power for His glory. So here is the second point that He wants to give that to us. And He is also happy with us when we, uh, when we live out His authority and power, we, when we use His authority and power, and He is happy with that and He will uh, reward us. Okay, and then see why many Christians do not do great things for God. Now my outline it has a purpose of changing people telling people how they have fallen, fallen short of the glory of God and how God's grace and nature is sufficient. And three, why many Christians don't live out this God's nature. And then four, how we can live out God's nature. So it's a simple outline to help people to live out God's nature. Now, we, you don't have to follow this. 
But it's best that you can include these four elements, especially God's nature and grace, and then how we can live out God's nature and grace. How, how exactly can, that we can live out God's uh, nature and grace. So why many Christians do not do great things for God? Because many Christians are weak spiritually, and they sin, they sin, and uh, you know, and there, there are sins and problems that block their lives. Okay, they are weak spiritually, and they sin, and the and the problem. I'm sorry, grammatically this is wrong. That they are weak spiritually, and they sin, and their problems block their lives, so they cannot do great things for God. So because people are weak spiritually and they sin and also they have problems that block their lives. Two, many Christians fail to perform miracles and they don't have faith in continual work of God. They don't believe that God can, can continue to work today. They don't believe that God can perform miracles now. And so they, they, they get very disappointed. They get very disappointed when they don't have miracles and then they get very unhappy. So we don't, uh, want to, we don't want to just look at the miracles. We want to trust in God and say, even when there, are, there is no miracle, I still trust in God. And when there are miracles, we thank God and we rejoice in God and we love God and we glorify God. And then some Christians just want glory from people. So when they just want glory from people, then God is not pleased with them when people just want to show themselves, not to show Jesus, not to talk about Jesus, one, how wonderful He is, and just to, let, to impress people of themselves, then Jesus is not pleased with them, and then Jesus will not bless them. Okay, then D, how, is very important how. How we can do great things for God. First, build up a strong relationship with God. That's the first thing, always because the strong relationship with God will bring God's presence to our lives and He will give us faith and strength and joy and peace and, and authority and power. Two, trust that God wants to use us greatly. That He wants to use every one of us. Every one of us is important. So I hope you all believe that. We are important. We are important in God's sight. So that He wants to use us greatly. Three, set our eyes on God's love for people and not on power and results. So always we want to set our eyes on God's love. Oh, God is loving us. God is blessing us. God wants to bless us and not on power and results. We don't just look for power and results. Sometimes people think that uh, I have to have miracles to impress people. Uh, we don't have to have miracles to impress people. We want to impress people with God's goodness. And then when God performs miracles, we are very happy. We glorify God. And then even when there are no miracles, it's fine. We continue trusting God. Five, practice praying for people by trusting in God's goodness and power. So when we pray for people, we trust in God's goodness. God is good. God wants to bless us. God wants to do great things for us. So we trust in His goodness and His power. So when we pray for people, we say, Wow, we enjoy you, Lord. Instead of just shouting, we want to guide people to trust in God. God, you're so good. God, you're so wonderful. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is so wonderful. So we want to continue to to. to Help people to trust in Jesus' goodness. How God is good. How God is wonderful. God is loving us right now. God wants to bless us right now. So we want to practice praying for people, especially laying on of the hands, that we help people to experience the Holy Spirit. And when people experience the Holy Spirit, they experience the peace and power. They see that God is living right now. God is blessing us right now. And five, uh, and six, expand our ministry with faith in God and uh, the heart and in God and with the heart to bless more people. Okay, so expand our ministry with faith in God and the heart to bless more people. We want to bless more people, and we trust that God wants to bless more people. So we trust in God and we follow God totally, and we say, God is doing greater things. God is doing greater things. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! 
So all the time we want to, want to uh, you know, we set our eyes on the goodness of God, set our eyes on how God wants to bless us, and we believe that when we trust in Him, when we glorify Him, He is very, very happy. God is very, very happy with us. And then God will bless us. So we set our eyes on Him, and then we want to expand our ministry. For instance, we ask God for ways how we can bring more people to Christ, how we can uh, change people's life, how we can first motivate a group of people in a church that they love God more, and they also have miracles. So we want to use the power of all the Christians together so uh, that the, all the members of the church have faith in God and believe in God all the time, and then so everyone will have greater faith and a close relationship with God. So teaching of, the, of God's nature and grace is very important so that everyone have confidence in Jesus' goodness, His love and grace and His power and authority. So everyone, when they pray for people, they see miracles and then they are very, very happy. And they are happy to be used by God. And then they want to, to serve God more. They want to glorify God more. That way, uh, we expand our ministry with the group of uh, devoted Christians in the church. When there are devoted Christians in the church, then they will, uh, you know, they, they will uh, help the ministry to grow together with other people, not just the pastor. So we don't, the pastors don't just do all the ministry. We want to train people so that they all do it together. And then when people do things, you know, and do greater things, we say, wow, this is great. This person is used by God. We want to glorify God, thank God for that. And then we want this person to also to share what, uh, to share with other people what, uh, how God is using him, how he has the motivation to be used by God. So we want them to, uh, to, to share the testimony so they can encourage other people also to be used by God. So we, everything we do, we do it for God's glory and not for ourselves. We want to do it for God's glory. We want to glorify God. We want the people to see the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And a challenge. Okay, we can challenge people. Say, Jesus has promised us uh, that we can do great things. Do you hunger for that? So do you want to do greater things for God? Do you believe that God can do greater things through you? And then do you want the best to happen to your lives? When we do greater things for God, then best, you know, the uh, better things will happen in our lives. Our life will go better and better. If we care about God's glory, He will be pleased with us and raise us to a high level. And our lives will be raised to a high level. So if we care about God's glory, we want more people glorified. I mean, want God to be glorified when He blesses more people. He will be pleased with us. God will be happy with people who want to glorify God. Not just, not to glorify ourselves. We want people to see how great God is, not how great we are. And then when we, when people, you know, when we glorify God all the time, then people, God is very happy and He will bless our life. Okay? So, um, I want to say again, so how God's nature and grace is helpful to us, uh, not only to give us more faith, we have faith in God, here I explain why we motivate people with God's grace and His nature, because when we see how good God is, how wonderful He is, how wise He is, how powerful He is, how holy He is, how caring He is and loving He is, then, then we have confidence to build up our relationship with God. Then we will trust in God more, we'll enjoy God more, we'll serve God more, uh, and then we have faith to great, do greater things for God. And first we have, we can enjoy God. We enjoy our relationship with God. We enjoy this, uh, the peace of God. We enjoy the presence of God. So first, we are changed in our lives and to bring healing because Jesus wants to heal us. So, so everything 
we experience come from God's goodness. That's the main point. God's nature and grace is His goodness. So everything we experience now, our healing, our joy, our strength, our wisdom, God's plan in our life, all of this come from God's goodness. And then the next step is how we can be used by God to do greater things for God. We can go to a higher level when we serve God, when we glorify God, that we trust that God wants us to do greater things for Him. So the Bible has promised us many times that Christians can do greater things and nothing is impossible with those who believe. So we can do greater and greater things. And God has a wonderful plan in our life. So I want to, uh, to encourage you. Whenever we study the Bible and whenever we preach, we always let people know how good God is, how wonderful He is, how powerful He is, how holy He is, how loving He is, how He wants to bless us and use us. So with all this assurance about God's goodness, then people will be motivated to follow God. Not, then we follow God not with our own power, but we follow God because we know that God is happy with us. God enjoys us coming to Him. And God will bless us and we can enjoy the fellowship with God and He will strengthen us and bless us. And then, uh, then we, we will enjoy our Christian life and our ministry. Okay, our next point. Our next point, next, next passage, uh, message here, I used three passages. Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the authority, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So this is the promise of Jesus, that I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. This is talking about Satan and, uh, and the demons, and over all the power of the enemy. That's, the, that's Satan. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. So we have authority over all Satan and demons and over all the power of the enemy. He has no power over us and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So nothing and nobody can hurt us and no demon can hurt us. And 2 Corinthians 10, 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into cap captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now there are a lot of people who talk about warfare. And from this passage, I want to show you what the warfare is. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. So the weapon of God and His warfare is not carnal, it's not of the flesh but mighty in God to pull down strongholds. And what kind of strongholds? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So the strongholds are thoughts in people's mind that exalts itself up against the knowledge of God. So, or the teaching of, of some people that they they, you know, they exalt themselves, they, they are proud, and they, uh, they are against God's knowledge. And bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and then bringing the thought of Christians into captivity, that we are captured by Christ to the obedience of Christ. So this passage talks about that the weapon of our warfare is to is by God's mighty power, not by carnal power, to cast down all the arguments and thoughts and any kind of proud things that exalt themselves over the knowledge of God, so that our thoughts are all captured by God to the obedience of Christ. So here it talks about the, the warfare against Satan is to be captured by God that our thoughts submit to God and then we obey God and then we can, then our life is submitted to God. So the warfare is mainly 